guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about quite a prevalent pathology and that is the hemorrhoids. So let's get started. So what are hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are swollen veins that are located in the lower rectum or around the anus. Hemorrhoids are also known as piles and can either be internal or external. Internal hemorrhoids develop within the anal or rectal canals whilst external hemorrhoids develop outside of the anus. So if we look at my picture on the right, we see these hemorrhoids, which are these swollen veins or dilated veins that are found within this anorectal region. And we see the internal hemorrhoids, which are located within the anorectal canals and the external hemorrhoids, which are found on the surface of the body. So with the external hemorrhoid, there's usually this bump, which is found near the anus and is usually just covered with a layer of skin. So it is visible and it's palpable and we are able to notice them quite easily on inspection. So now let's talk a little bit more about the internal versus the external hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids are usually found within the rectal canal and most patients can't usually see or feel them. They generally don't hurt because we have fewer pain sensing nerves in this area and bleeding may be the only sign of them. External hemorrhoids however are under the skin around the anus where there are many more pain sensing nerves so they tend to hurt as well as bleed. Sometimes hemorrhoids prolapse which means they fall down or slip out of place or get bigger and bulge outside the anal sphincter. Then we may be able to see them as moist bumps that are pinker than the surrounding area. Prolapsed hemorrhoids can usually go back inside on their own. A blood clot can form in the external hemorrhoid and this makes them turn a purple or bluish color and this process is called thrombosis. This may also cause pain, itchiness and cause the hemorrhoid to bleed out. So a few points were mentioned here. First of all, the internal hemorrhoids are usually found within the anorectal canal and most patients can't usually see or feel them because we don't have that many pain sensing nerves in this area. The external hemorrhoids, however, are much more painful because we have a lot of nerves around the skin or around the anus in our patients. Sometimes the internal hemorrhoids may prolapse, which means they also can push through. If you look at my picture down here below, you can see this internal hemorrhoid which has pushed through out of the anal canal and out onto the anal surface. And this can appear as a moist pinkish lump on the surface of the skin. We can also have a blood clot that can form in the external hemorrhoid and if we look above this is what it looks like. Because that vein has become so dilated and the blood is tending to stay in there it has a tendency to thrombose or clot and when it clots it causes a lot of pain and itchiness and it can bleed out quite a bit. So what are the signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are very common and nearly three out of every four adults will have hemorrhoids at at least one point in their lives. Signs and symptoms of hemorrhoids may include painless bleeding during bowel movements and this is called hematochesia. So we have fresh blood per anus. We have itching, burning or irritation in the anal region, pain or discomfort in the anal region, swelling around the anus or a lump near the anus which may be very sensitive and this is as we mentioned before a thrombosed hemorrhoid and these are not really dangerous but can be extremely painful and sometimes may need to be lanced and drained. So we'll talk about the lancing and draining as we go further in the lecture, but just keep in mind that usually the thrombosed hemorrhoids are very painful. So what are the causes of these hemorrhoids? The veins around the anus tend to stretch under pressure and may bulge or swell. Swollen veins, which are called hemorrhoids, can develop from increased pressure in the lower rectoanal area due to straining during bowel movements, sitting for long periods of time on the toilet, chronic diarrhea or constipation, obesity, pregnancy, smoking, eating lots of spicy foods, having anal intercourse, or having a low fiber diet. So these are all causes that cause these veins within the anal rectal canal to stretch and swell up. These actually bleed out. They become very sensitive and tender and all these different conditions promote the development of hemorrhoids in some way or the other. So now let's talk about some complications of hemorrhoids. Strangulation. If the blood supply to an internal hemorrhoid is cut off because it has become trapped in the anal muscles, the hemorrhoid may become strangulated 
leading to blood clots forming in the affected area causing a thrombus. So remember again, we said that a thrombus can form there due to the stasis of blood. And the stasis is usually caused by the anal muscles. So remember, we have all these anal muscles around here, which are contracting and relaxing at different times during the day. And by doing so, it may actually cut off the blood supply to the vein and thus causing a thrombus to develop. Anemia, sometimes due to the chronic blood loss from the hemorrhoids, one may develop anemia. So again, remember we said the first sign or symptom of patients with hemorrhoids is that bleeding per anus or that fresh blood in stool and that's called hematochesia. And if these patients have a lot of hematochesia over time, they will have anemia because they are losing all that blood in stool. The diagnosis. The physician may be able to see if one has external hemorrhoids simply by looking. But tests and procedures to diagnose internal hemorrhoids may include a digital examination. And during a digital rectal exam, the doctor inserts a gloved, lubricated finger into the rectum and he feels for anything unusual such as growths or swellings. So if you look at my picture down below on the left, we see the digital rectal exam. We could also do visual inspection. Because internal hemorrhoids are often too soft to be felt during a rectal exam, the doctor may also examine the lower portion of your colon and rectum with an anoscope, proctoscope or sigmoidoscope. And that's in the next picture in the middle here, we see an example of an anoscope. So this is inserted into the anus and the doctor is able to take a quick peek to see if there's any swollen veins inside. The physician may also want to examine the entire colon during a process called a colonoscopy. And this is usually done if he suspects another disease causing similar symptoms such as colonic polyps, colon cancer, etc. So the colonoscopy is reserved basically for patients who are at high risk, meaning patients usually over 50 or who have a history of Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, as well as colon cancer. And basically the colonoscopy is done to be on the safe side and to rule out any other cause of the hematochesia, meaning the blood in the stool, because these diseases have a much more aggressive nature and require immediate treatment. But hemorrhoids, usually they are not really a medical emergency. So there's quite a vast difference between the two and we need to distinguish between them. Treatment. So let's talk about the treatment of hemorrhoids. So there are some lifestyle changes and home remedies that are quite common in the treatment of hemorrhoids. Just a few of them are witch hazel and this can reduce both itching and pain aloe vera gel, which has anti-inflammatory properties that are known to be effective against treating inflammatory skin conditions, eating high fiber foods because they make stools easier to pass and they cause less straining for the patient. Soaking regularly in warm baths or sit baths, these help soothe the irritation from the hemorrhoids. Not using dry toilet paper because this can aggravate the existing hemorrhoids around the anal canal keeping the anal area clean, meaning bathing and washing regularly, taking oral pain relievers, and applying cold compressors because these usually relieve the swelling. So in terms of medical treatment, we could use topical treatments, which are hemorrhoid creams, ointments and suppositories or pads, which contain hazel, hydrocortisone and lidocaine that can relieve pain and itching, at least temporarily. We can also do an external hemorrhoid thrombectomy and again, if a thrombus has formed within the external hemorrhoid, the doctor can remove the clot with a simple incision and drainage procedure. So if we look at my picture here in the middle, we can see the radical incision or the circumferal incision, but this is basically a thrombectomy to remove the thrombus that has been formed within that hemorrhoid. We can also use diosmin and hesperidian compounds, which are flavonoid compounds. And when used together, they prolong the vasoconstrictor effect of noradrenaline on the venous wall, thus increasing the venous return and reducing the venous hyperpressure present in patients with chronic venous diseases. And there's an example here. We have Venolex, Detrolex. These are all different examples of these flavonoid compounds that can be very helpful in the treatment of hemorrhoids, varicose veins, and venous insufficiency in general. We can also do a number of minimally invasive procedures. These include the rubber band ligation. In this process, the physician will place one or two tiny rubber bands around the base of the internal hemorrhoid to cut off its circulation, thus causing the hemorrhoid to wither and fall off within a week. 
So if you look at my picture up here, we can see the ligator is pushed over the internal hemorrhoid and you can see the bands are ejected and it actually cuts off the blood supply and this will dry off and wither and fall off within at least a week. We could also do injection or sclerotherapy and here the doctor injects a chemical solution into the hemorrhoid tissue to shrink it. So here's an example down here. We can see that sclerosing agent, which is injected right into that internal hemorrhoid. And this usually causes that hemorrhoid to shrink up and also sort of wither away. We can also do coagulation, which can be done by infrared, laser or bipolar coagulation. The coagulation techniques use laser, infrared light or heat and they cause small bleeding, internal hemorrhoids to harden and shrivel. So if we look here at my picture on the right below, we have the infrared photocoagulation. So as you can see, those infrared rays are targeted to that internal hemorrhoid down here, and it causes these hemorrhoids to harden, shrivel up, and eventually fall out. And finally, the surgical procedures. We could do a hemorrhoid removal, which is called a hemorrhoidectomy, and this is basically the surgical removal of the hemorrhoid. We can also do hemorrhoid stapling, and this procedure is also known as a stapled hemorrhoidopexy and is a surgical procedure that involves the removal of abnormally enlarged hemorrhoid tissue, followed by the repositioning of the remaining hemorrhoidal tissue back into its normal anatomical position. So as you can see, we have the circular stapler, the, that internal hemorrhoid, and we have these hemorrhoids inside the stapler that stapler shuts and it actually repositions the tissue back into its normal anatomic position. And that brings us to the end of this video on the hemorrhoids. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. If you would like to download a copy of this video, you can click the link in the description. I hope you find these presentations very informative and helpful. And until next time, bye for now.